This is uh, the Tug Cohannet pulling a barge up, in the, up the Taunton River. I don't know the exact location. This is fishing, herring fishing, uh, somewhere in the Taunton River, possibly the Simmons Fish Grounds, which is just south of Berkeley Bridge. This is the uh, Seine Reel, and it's believed to be on the wharf where the present Taunton Yacht Club is on Water Street in Dighton. They wound the Seines on that big item. Dighton Rock. These gentlemen at Dighton Rock we have the names at the historical house, but uh, two of them are Harvard University professors and two are from Brown, and I believe they're selectmen of uh, Berkeley. This is a snapshot we got just recently within the last two or three years of the Historical Society. It's aboard the Polly. I don't know the captain's name or the lady's name, but there were more than one Polly, and it was at the time of the 1912 bicentennial in Dighton. This is the Polly again, I believe. It's at uh, the wharf where uh, Shaw's boatyard now is. Another view of the poly. This is looking north towards the yacht club, present yacht club. That's the boathouse of George Phillips. He built and repaired boats there. It was lost in the 38 hurricane, floated out. To the right is where the Tartan Yacht Club is now. Not along with the road. And this is the later where the road went. You can see the trolley car tracks on the left. Present junction of Pleasant and Water Street. This is Smith Memorial Hall on Main Street. It was built in memory of Alice Smith by her children. They moved from Dighton to Newport and did very well financially in the shipping trade. This building was dedicated in November of 1889. It's now in use by the community too. This is uh, Dr. Shove's house not on the 1850 map, but built about 1853, according to information we have. Uh, it was later, uh, he was in the fishing business, it was later Dr. Williams, Dr. Sales, Dr. Butler, and then Dr. Sousa from 1934 to 1984. This is the Vance House, sort of, uh, I guess, a Victorian Queen Anne type. It's the second house on the site. The first house was owned by William Cobb, and it burnt. And the Vances uh, had this mortgage to the hilt, they say, and uh, made believe that they're wealthy when they really weren't. This house was built by Edmund Hathaway he was a sheriff of Bristol County. 
It's the second house on the site, the site being uh, Ebenezer Stetson store before that. This house was owned by Reed and Andrews. They were, Andrews had a store there. It may be the second house on the site. Uh, Tompkins later had it and had a porch, went around three sides. Mr. Tompkins uh, delivered ice, Mr. to deliver ice to our house. And he wanted me to ride with him on his route, but I wouldn't go with him because my mother told me I shouldn't go with anyone I didn't know. And he said, you mean you don't know me? I says, well, not that well. These two houses were a Whitmarsh house and then a Costa and a not very good pictures because they were taken when the leaves were on the trees. You have to take our pictures for the Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, after the leaves fall in the fall and before they come out in the spring. This house was said to be a store and the lady told me that her folks started housekeeping before 1900 in the top floor of this. But we believe that this was moved from Main Street when the first red and white store, which was an uh, Andrew store, uh, was built where the first fire station was and was moved here, and that's where people got the idea that it was a store. This was a Whitmarsh house. Charles Edward was postmaster, 1885. It was a duplex house. I don't know if it is now, but it was for a good many years, perhaps because the store and post office were in one side. He died very young from blood poisoning from a herringbone that stuck in his throat. This was believed to perhaps have been a fishing hut. It's in better state right now than when we took the picture. This house was a tailor, had a tailor's shop in it by Mr. Whitmarsh, and in her later days, Mrs. Whitmarsh lived there. She had some disagreement with her son, Charles, who we saw previous, his house previous, and uh, this house and the other house and the John Hathaway house were in litigation until uh, 1953 when Mr. Lane got it straightened out as uh, he, he ended up being the heir or his wife be, was the heir because he was related to the Whitmarshes. It also includes the playground which is down there, the ball field, which we do not have a picture of. Hurricane of 1938 went to the second floor. I think 54 pretty nearly as much. This is the Coram House. Thomas Coram came from England and built ships before 1700. He was not too popular with people in Dighton because he brought his own help with him and therefore didn't hire Dighton people. Uh, he, re he left money in, in Boston at St. At St. Thomas for St. Thomas Church in Taunton whenever the heathens thought that they needed a church. He gave money to establish the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in, in England, I believe in London. This picture I took mainly to take the barn in the background because there are not too many old barns around. This house was Captain James Smith's. A 
this house was, I believe, an Allen. Whether he's a captain or not, I don't remember. Allen Wright, I believe. This is Captain Allen House. It's on the 1895 map. Whether he had his own ship, I do not know. I talked to Lester Lassen before he died, and he said he didn't know whether he had his own ship, but he did, uh, was a captain of a ship. This house belonged to the Cobb estate. Ernest Cobb, and then later, George Cobb. And this house was a Captain uh, Wright and a Captain Blake. This house was Gideon Francis. It's on the 1895 map, but he was instrumental in uh, the Dighton Stove Lining Company in uh, 1874, but whether he lived in another place, we do not know. This house was a Captain Briggs. He was a grandfather of Paul Lassen, who runs the garage. Uh, he brought the ballast, the ballast he brought back in his ship to build the house was lumber from the Carolinas. He also was lost, he and his crew, off of Point Judith, hit, believe, believe, by one of the Fall River Line steamers. This picture is just of the garage, the barn, old barn. This was a Cyrus Talbot house. He did a lot of uh, moving of rocks from the Channel and Taunton River and built the wharf for the stove lining company, moving rocks that were heavy, real heavy, tons and tons, and they d I don't know how they did it with the equipment they had then. In later life, when he retired, he dealt in real estate. This is John Scott's house. He came from Germany, and he was on the wharf area in New York when he was asked by uh, Mr. Cobb who was in New York at the time, if he would like to be a seaman on his boat. And he came to Dighton, and after that, he ran scows with uh, William Whitmarsh for Major Charles Whitmarsh, and they did coastal trade from Dighton to Providence, mainly. This was a Blake house, and then a King, and then Lester Lassen. Lester Lassen said that uh, Miss King was a dressmaker, and Helen Lane said that she used to come to their house and make dresses for her mother and she and her sister. This was E. Wright house. We do not seem to have anything on that, and after that it was a Mary Sullins and she and her sister were dressmakers. This is George Phillips's garage. She went into in about 1920s, when I guess he wasn't doing so much in the boat building business. Now this is believed to have the River School incorporated into this house. But there's some different opinion on that. Some believe that the school was the boathouse that we saw earlier. This was a John Reed house about 1750. He was a shipbuilder, and he 
built the Muddy Cove Bridge and he contracted to do it for someone and he didn't fulfill his contract and ended up losing his house. This picture of the Muddy Cove Bridge the way it is practically today. This is the custom house in the Andrews Wharf where the ferry crossed is right across from it. Customs House was opened from 1789 to 1834 when Fall River became the port of customs. Uh, Adijah Bayless, aide de decamp to General Washington, was the first customs collector and he rented the downstairs room on the lift. see the little entranceway on the left side of the house. This house we know is a Spooner house, but it was actually built by Elkana Andrews. About 1750 or before. He died in British Guiana before the 1800, the sea captain in the West Indies trade. This is the wharf at the Eddy House. That was built around 1750. Elkana Andrews built the Spona House, and then he built the Customs House and the Eddy House for his sons. Later on, Darius Perry bought the Eddy house and gave it to his daughter, who married Eddie, and they ran a summer home there. My mother remembers going by in a trolley car, seeing the lady sitting on the front porch rocking with her hat and gloves on. And later on, they did so well that they added another building out back called the cottage, which was later removed. We have stationery at the historical house that shows canoeing, horseback riding, and swimming at the Eddy House. This is the Darius Perry house. He was a captain and a merchant seaman. He sailed around the Horn, was represented of the general court in 1825 from the town of Dighton. This house has just recently been trained, changed drastically. This is a Sylvester Perry house and uh, was early 1700s. According to a letter to the former town historian Helen Lane had from her grandmother who started housekeeping in the lower part of the house saying it was a very old house. Sylvester Perry was selectman in 1819. Perry family had this house until about 1929 when they moved to the Cape. They were interested in the herring fishing business, made a living that way. This is Nathan Simmons' house about 1871. He was a river pirate, but he moved to Long Island, New York. After that, it was the Romero estate who was manager of uh, Anchor Cullen Gumworks, which is now ICI. Before the Andersons brought it, why, the front lawn was all grass, and uh, they put in a rock garden, and most of the people in Dighton went to and through with a rock, 
rock garden, they thought the lawn was much prettier. You see the deer in the background. I believe that was over the well, and my husband used to do plumbing for them, and I think they had to swing that over to get into the well. That's a gazebo, which now is being destroyed by vandals. Made a nice little summer place for looking the river. This house belonged to the two family. He worked for the uh, telephone company. The rumor is that they had some difficulty with the Romeros and they built as close to, they to their house as possible, right on the edge of the land. But I don't know whether the rumor is true or not. This house was owned by Darius Perry. It's on the 1850 map. And on the 1871 map, it's labeled as a fish house or a fish hut. Plus, it's had the family room and it added to the right anyway. This is Captain Seth Talbot house. Uh, he was engaged in the West Indies trade. The counting house was downstairs in the left-hand side, and the town landing goes almost up to the front door, which uh, a lot of people didn't know about till it came time to put in water. The people didn't have too much to pay for the water because the town owned the land almost to their front steps. This is Captain John Pierce House. Later, a Luther house. Most people remember Marty Luther. He could spell backwards and he held his books upside down. And I sat near him in the Dighton Methodist Church where he sang from his hymn book with it upside down. Captain John Smith was, Pierce was quite a drinker and he killed himself when he fell out of the top bedroom window into the ground. As the hoth trough in the early 1900s. This is Dr. Borges' house. The uh, front door faced west when they first moved there, and they, uh, Pleasant Street wasn't through then, and the front, they went into their house from the drive off of Hart Street. It's the Yacht Club at Dighton Rock Park. This view was taken from the tower at Dighton Rock Park. This went out in the 38 hurricane, I believe. This is Dighton Rock Park. Pictures of the entrance. This promotional scheme by the uh, street railway, the trolley cars, Dighton Rock Park, Sebastia Lake, Wooded Springs, uh, which is up near the Norton Tartan Line, and uh, Tallaquega Park was where the uh, tuberculosis hospital was in Attleboro. Dighton Rock Park burnt, I believe, in 1921 in June. It had closed and was being dismantled at the time anyway, and the material was later used to build Wilbur's on the Tartan in Somerset. See the two steamers that brought people from Fall River and Providence. 
And Dighton Rock Park consisted of a tower where you could see for a long distance. They had a dance hall. They had a place where you could have your picture taken. And they had uh, clam bakes. And I believe they were open Wednesdays and Saturday nights. My father and mother used to go in the trolley cars, and there were so many trolley cars going to Taunton and Fall River when it came time to go home that the power would go off and they sometimes would have to sit on the switch in Dighton. This is the Molasses Affair, which we reenacted in 1976. The Molasses Affair took place in April in 1765. We had our early tea party, only it was with molasses. A ship owned by a man in Taunton came into Newport and declared so many barrels of molasses. Evidently, they didn't declare enough because about a day later, two gentlemen came up and tried to make them pay for more barrels of molasses. Uh, they weren't going to pay for the molasses, so one gentleman went back to get more help for the military and left one man with the ship. And while he was gone, they took the one man that was supposed to be watching the ship up into the tavern and they got him drunk. And uh, this affair went on for quite a few days. It took them two or three days to get back from Newport with help. In a minute, you will see the reenactment of throwing the barrels overboard. It, was take, it took place by some of the boys in town in 1976, dressed up as pirates. The ship was Ben Shaw's Shawnee that they used. And now you can see the barrels in the river. They disappeared somewhere, whether they took them up on Richmond Hill or the selectmen got them, no one ever knows. But many years later, Helen Lane read town reports saying they still mentioned the molasses affair. So evidently the gentleman who owned the ship never got his money. It's an awful sight from the river. Most of them are just pretty pictures. This is looking towards Elm Street from 138. We have different seasons. This is ice in the river looking towards 138 from Elm Street. This is looking towards Brook Street, looking west. As we progress up the river, this is at the bridge on Brook Street. can't see too well this picture, but there's a lot of rocks in there. And this is the foundation uh, for the mill that was Jared Talbot, settler, the first settler of Dighton's grist mill. Later on, it became a sawmill, and it was used as different types of mills uh, up to Senator Chase's lifetime. <coughs> That looks like a crocodile is going to get you, that tree. This is a split in the rock, and the next picture will show where a tree split the rock. We didn't believe this muddy little river could be so beautiful. And as we go along, you'll see how the seasons change, because it took us more than one year to do it. We're nearing uh, the, what we call the swimming hole and back of what is public service publications now, just west of that. Yeah. See the colored leaves and see how we have some lovely reflections here. So even with flash, it was so very dark, some of the pictures. It's 
right along in here, I believe, that Sunken Brook comes in. That's the brook that crosses Center Street just east of the Dighton Nursing Home. This is the waterfall where Sunken Brook comes in. There's Helen Brown on the left and Helen Lane on the right, sitting on a tree, resting. Pointing to a tree that had uh, rotted and yet another little tree grew from it. There's another little waterfall. What we did is, when we decided where we were going to go, we would take two cars and go and leave one and then come back. Then we had a car to come back and it was very dry this year. The water line on this huge rock is about where that branch goes across. You'll see other rocks as we go along the same way. It's a very dry season. 65. 65 and 66, we did it. And there's a foundation of the mill. Uh, we don't always know just what mill, but we know that there's diff different mill sites as we go along. Some of them we can uh, tell more about. This is the site, we believe, of the ta Leonard Tax Mill, built about 1845. Wall, yeah, that's right. And this is a very interesting place. Uh, we couldn't get some of the pictures of it, but see these berries were there, and there was a pear tree and an apple tree, so we knew that there was a, either a house or a mill site at this particular place. Well, we believe this is where uh, it was. Now this bridge was built so that people could walk across the river when it was high because the Glidden Farm, which is on uh, Center Street, it's about four houses east of the Dighton Nursing Home. Uh, that was Glidden's farm, and this, they had cows, and the cows, they walked through the water, but the people taking care of them or going getting them didn't want to get wet, so they built the bridge. It's now been taken down. See there, the water line about a foot down from the top of that rock is where the water in the dry year showed a lot more rock. There's the foundation of another mill, and uh, this was called the flaxseed oil mill. and. Uh, when night came, they would stick a board in the water wheel so it wouldn't turn, and they fresh yet, as they called them then, came up. We'd call them a gale or a hurricane. It broke the board, and the water wheel continued to go up and down, and some of the machinery or what inside went up and down, and it got so hot that it burnt the mill down. Later on, there was a sawmill on this site, and then a tub and, and paint factory. This is just south of uh, Center Street a ways. Even with flashes, some of these pictures didn't come out too bright. This is, I believe, what the kids call fairyland. I don't know if anyone swims there today or not, but I know my son did, and I did as a kid. It was off of Pine Street, uh, just south of uh, the Crawford's house, you went down a lane. And this is the site of the David Perry mill, a machine shop and uh, a tax mill. This is actually uh, fairyland where they used to swing off that tree into the water, but it was very low that year. And the stream kind of divides here. It, they probably did that just to make a place for the water wheel. This is Center Street looking south. We have winter scenes again now. 
This is right in the Center Street Bridge, right at Middle Street. There it is, we're looking north. What's that house there? Uh, can't see. Look at it. This, this is Middle Street. See how old the cars are. My white wagon. Most of these pictures are all north of Center Street. We're walking towards Williams along the river. Don't ask me, I don't know. Looks like somebody had soap there, suds. I'm getting up to the, these huge rocks were actually like a roadbed. This is just off uh, Middle Street, a little west of Middle Street. And uh, the next picture will show you the huge rocks, whether this was another mill site. Uh, I guess people today use it as a place to go fishing, but some people have disturbed the rocks and some have fallen into the river. You can see where it's in the Oh yeah, flat that's where the water wheel went right side of that. This is Brig Street looking south when Mr. Carlos owned it. He had a lot of animals along the river there. The pen didn't you couldn't see him. There's another scene. Yep. Now this is the waterfall at the this was Matthew Briggs Forge and this was a business that ran and was in a family for 180 years. They even made shovels for the gold rush in California. That was soon after that. I guess they didn't do too much, maybe up to about 1900. This is the pond looking west. The dam had been rebuilt, I think, about 1920 or something is on the dam. I don't No, this is still Brig Street. And this is the pond. This is looking west from Brig Street. We walked along the north shore of that. Some very pretty scenes. Couldn't believe it. Mr. Collis at one time raised ponies and he also raised horses. Uh, I believe at the time of my children were growing up that the range rider, when he came to Providence, uh, what was the other fellow with him, Bill West or something, they bought palominos from Mr. Collis. This is looking west still, We're walking towards William Street. See, it did take us a period of time because we changed seasons a couple of times here. We couldn't spend all our time walking the river. You had to know where you left off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's some very pretty reflections. See how the sky reflects in the water there. Now this is the site of what there was once a fulling mill and the place, this area was called White Birch. And I know Helen Lane had talked about it and then after she died I talked to Roy Horton because he knew where White Birch was. This is just east of William Street. And after it was a fulling factory, it was Josh Reed's grist mill, later a sawmill, and it was used up until it was called Jilson's sawmill then, and was used up into the 40s. I believe that somebody, oh, Mrs. Kelleher, who's 
father worked there said that they used it up through World War II. Some more of the site. That was the dam. Now I took this picture because somebody said that was in our group that I ought to take it. They thought it was a baby dinosaur's footstep. I don't know, but I took it anyway. It's on a rock, a big rock that I climbed up on. This is looking towards the copper squash section, I believe. It's west from William Street. No. This is part of Papa Squash. I believe when Papa Squash first began, they did not have the swimming pool. They just used, they dammed an area of the pond and used it. <clears throat> I believe this is looking north from uh, Houghton Street Bridge. And it was from there, and back of the reed farm, that we could not walk because there was nothing but bull prize. By the time we got away from them, we were so far from the river, you couldn't even see the river. This is on the east side of William Street, about uh, opposite Kirk Terrace, and the Sacragansett River. This is the east branch. The west branch is up on Walker Street in back of the roughly Charlie Goff's house. This has a little bridge, and uh, there's Helen Brown on it. And you'll notice this next slide shows where they dug with a bulldozer to make a bigger pond for the irrigation because there were uh, farmlands just side of this and they evidently used it to irrigate their crops. Now this is the east branch of the Sacred Grants River taken from 44 looking down on it. We do not have a picture of the west branch but it's a very tiny, tiny brook and it crosses, comes out of Sacred Grants Country Club and it crosses 44 and runs uh, west of Walker Street. That's it. Back to square one.